Thank you for joining this quick showcase on our new OA model. Uh, unfortunately, due to unforeseen personal circumstances, Claudia is unable to be with us today. Um, so I'm stepping in for her at the last minute to give her presentation. So for, you, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Hannah Barnsley. I'm the Strategic Programme Manager for Publishing at the Royal Society of Chemistry, where I support the delivery of our publishing strategy, including our commitment to transition to 100% open access by 2028. Very quickly, in case you're not familiar with the RSC, we are an international not-for-profit membership organisation serving the chemistry community. We are also a publisher and publish around 100 books a year and about 40,000 articles in 57 journals that span the chemical sciences and adjacent fields. So open access is at the core of the RSC's mission. We've long been innovative in the OA space, experimenting with various OA models. In October 2022, um, on Halloween in fact, uh, we made a public commitment to become a fully OA publisher by 2028. Our vision for a fully OA future is one where authors are not paying APCs and where the costs associated with the services that publishers provide are distributed across the scholarly communications landscape and not just the responsibility of a few research intensive institutions. To achieve this future, we're partnering with stakeholders across the globe to better understand where they're at with open access, how we can support their authors with mandates, and ultimately how we can work together to develop and co-develop new OA models to sustain a future fully open access environment. So, after a year of collaboration with the Leibniz Information Centre for Science and Technology and University Library in Germany, we are very excited to announce our first new pilot open access model. Through this new agreement, authors from 77 institutions can publish unlimited OA across all RSC journals for the next four years. Really exciting as well is that the model allows for participation from non-publishing institutions, which I'll go into in a bit more detail shortly. So Germany was a great place to start for us since we already had great ties with the uh, TIB and also because of the diversity of our customer base, which is quite representative of the challenge we face in most of our key regions. We talk about it a bit like a like a microcosm that's really representative of, of that broad spectrum of um, customers. So this is a kind of representation of that microcosm, as it were. Oh, is that one minute? <laughs> okay. Um, so before the development of our new deal, we had a read and publish agreement in Germany that covered institutions with both low and high publishing output. We also had a range of single customers on subscription agreements, which again ranged in terms of publication output and read only licenses. Many of the smaller institutions were unable to join our read and publish agreement because the pricing structure was just prohibitive for them. So, in short, it would have been impossible to migrate to a fully OA world within the confines of the traditional read and publish model. And in reality, the most likely scenario would have been that a few research, institu research intensive institutions would have had to carry the brunt of the financial burden, or that a large percentage of our authors in Germany would have had to pay individual APCs, and it's not the future we envisaged. Neither of these outcomes aligns with our overall OA ambition to achieve OA at the institutional level, where authors are not paying for OA and where a few institutions are not saddled with the costs of OA. So the challenge was to develop a whole new type of model that fulfills our overall OA ambition, that works for a range of different institution types, and in particular allows for participation from traditionally read-only institutions. So the result is our new RSC Platinum Consortium model, our first model designed with a fully OA future in mind. There are three main components to the pricing. So a base membership fee, which is a flat rate that all participating institutions pay. Then there's a publishing component that only applies to institutions that publish. And then lastly, there's a discount structure that leverages the idea of community action. So 
The more institutions that participate, the better the rate is for all participating institutions. And really, the, the key thing is that it allows and encourages participation from non-publishing institutions as well. Uh, it's also not an AP, APC based model. The publishing component is distributed across publishing institutions. It is not tied to a per article fee. This allowed us to make the deal unlimited. Again, this is in alignment with our overall OA ambitions. So the fees for participating institutions are fair and they're equitable, which was a huge contributing factor to the success of these negotiations. And lastly, really importantly, is that the model is sustainable for when we transition all of our journals to fully OA. I will leave it there, but please do come and talk to me if you have any questions. Um, depending on the level of detail in the model, I can also put you in touch with Claudia directly. Uh, thank you very much.